Hey everyone, it's Nitish here and in today's tutorial, we are diving into the world of React and CSS to create a masonry layout from scratch. So this is the kind of layout which is not just visually appealing but also highly functional for various web design needs. So masonry layout is a layout method where one axis uses a grid layout which is this one and the other a masonry layout which is this vertical one so on the masonry axis rather than sticking to a grid with gaps being left after shorter items the items in the next row rise up to completely fill the gaps for example this is the masonry grid so you can see that on the horizontal axis the items are following the rules of a grid but on the vertical axis if for any item in the next row which has a shorter height it automatically floats up or comes up to fill up any space which could be left because of the upper items shorter height as compared to the height of the item on its right so for example you can see that the height of item 1 is less than item 3 so in a traditional grid the item 2 will not come up to fill up the gap which would have been left but in masonry layout the item 2 over here has come up to fill the gap completely and this form of grid layout is called as masonry layout so masonry layout are more than just a trendy design choice they have practical applications in the real world for instance think about a digital art gallery website where each piece of art has different dimensions a masonry layout can display these artworks beautifully without confining them to uniform sizes similarly if you are building a recipe blog this layout can handle images and text of various lengths and sizes making your content more engaging and accessible so as you have seen already this is the final version of our masonry layout notice how it fluidly adjusts to different screen sizes maintaining its aesthetic appeal so for example if i will restore this window to change its size then you can see that because of the responsive behavior of the masonry layout the number of columns which are permissible for any screen size they are automatically changing based on the screen size so simply for a smaller screen size there are less columns and for larger screen sizes there are more columns now let's check out how we can create a masonry layout in react by using pure css so the first thing that i will do is i will open up app css and i will remove everything from over here now for implementing a masonry layout using pure css we just need three things the first one is uh, hold on the first one is masonry layout the second one is a masonry item and the third one is css media queries to handle the responsiveness for different screen sizes so let's get to it now the first class which i am going to add is for our app so let's add a padding to our app content so i'm just going to add a padding over here so padding of 10px next comes the part of our masonry layout class so dot masonry layout and over here we just have to provide the column gap let's set the value as 1 em so column gap is the gap between the columns of the masonry layout now let's create the class for the masonry item so dot masonry item so first i am going to add break inside and the value is avoid so this break inside avoid will make sure that the columns will not break and split into the next column next i am going to add margin bottom of 1 em this will make sure that there is some margin between the different masonry items in rows which simply means the margin 
between the top masonry item and the bottom masonry item. Next, let's just add some styling information for the individual masonry items. So let's set the background color as light gray. And let's set the border as 1px and then solid. And then let's add the value as light. Um, you know what? I am going to add light blue. Okay. Next, let's add the border radius of 20px. And I am also going to add some padding for the content. So padding of 15px. Let's also change the box sizing method from content box to um, border box. So border box sizing method does not include the margin, but content box does. So it is for styling the individual masonry items. Now it's time to add the media queries for the masonry layout for different screen sizes. So the first add the rate media section that I will add is for the minimum width. So add media and then for min width of 576px, let's add the masonry layout class and I am going to set the column count as 2. So for all the screen sizes or screen widths which are below 576px, they will have a default column count value of 1. Now I'm just going to copy it and paste it for 768. So 768 column count. You know what? Let's use 4. And for the next breakpoint, which is 992, let's use the column count value as 6. And for the extra large screens where we have the width as 1200, I'm going to use column count as 8. So that I think is pretty much everything that we need to do on the CSS front. Now let's open up our app.js file. Now I am going to remove this header from over here and also this logo because we don't need it. We have an app class, so let's keep it. Now let's create a masonry layout component. So const masonry layout equals to the items are going to be provided along with the props. So items are basically the masonry layout items that will be rendered. So let's return a div which is going to have the class name of our masonry container. So class name is going to be masonry layout. And let's map all the items over here. So items.map and then for each item, we are going to return an individual div. So I think I will need to add a bracket over here and then one over here as well. Yep. All right. So all the items that we are going to use will have an ID property. So key can be set as um, item dot ID. If there is no ID property for any of the items, then you can simply use the index for each item as well that is fine and for the content of the div we can simply provide the item dot content so I will add the items that will be rendered in a moment but first let's also add the class name for the masonry item as well so masonry item one more thing that we have to do is to um, mock the variable height of all the items we can provide the individual heights with each item, but let's also set the style here as well. Although the style is completely irrelevant in a practical masonry layout, but for the sake of demo, I am going to demonstrate to you how different heights of the masonry items are going to fit in the masonry layout. So for that, I am just going to set the height properties value as the height, which is in the each items property so dollar item item dot height and let's also add a px after that and that is pretty much everything i think we need to do for the masonry layout it's just that the arrow function syntax is not correct all right now let's save it and 
render our masonry layout component from the app component and let's provide the items prop value now i am going to copy and paste a bunch of mock items that we will be using so these are the mock items that we are going to provide as a prop value for the items prop let me just format this component or this page okay now let's see if our masonry layout is looking as expected or not so for that i am just going to run the command npm and then start so this is how the masonry layout is looking now let's check the responsiveness of this masonry layout so i'm just going to resize the browser's window for that so let's do that so you can see that for smaller sizes we only have one item for larger screens we have more items based on the media queries that we have provided now there is one more way to test the responsiveness and that is by using the mobile simulator extension this is how it is going to look in multiple devices so let me change the device to uh, let's say iphone 11 so this is how it is looking in iphone 11 pro for any tablets for example ipad air 4 this is how it will look in the portrait mode and let's um, flip the orientation and this is how it will look in the landscape mode so it's looking pretty cool and awesome and this is how the masonry layouts can be created i hope you found this tutorial helpful and you are excited to apply this technique in your projects remember practice is key to mastering any new skill so don't hesitate to experiment with the code we covered today if you enjoyed this video and learned something new please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to stay updated on future tutorials i am nitij and it's been great guiding you through this process happy coding and i will see you in the next video